Okay, hi everybody. I don't know what happened. We seemed to have gotten uh, some connection problems. I hope that everybody comes back in and uh, is able to watch. Um, but we're gonna do some exciting things today. Um, we're looking forward to, uh, to a lot of great stuff. We're gonna start off by showing something special here in Mitzvah Richo, what I like to show you all the time, the special things in my, in my town. Then we're going to go and tell the special story of Rav Chama Bar Ada Shliach Tzion, somebody who lived here in Eretz Yisrael. Okay, and then I'm gonna start. I'm gonna show you something of mine that's really special that I use to do mitzvot. So that's what I'm. That's what we're gonna do today. Very excited about today's show. I think it's gonna be great. It's a beautiful day here in Eretz Yisrael. You can see it's a, a little cold, a little chilly, but uh, but for the most part. A really nice day out today. It's too bad we can't go anywhere, but at the same time, it's nice that when we walk outside our houses, it's able to be uh, to be nice. So the first thing I want to show you is one of the favorite parts of my house, and I, I but the, it's so special. It's such a good part. I don't get to use it that often, but when I do, I'm the happiest, happiest person in the world. And I'm sure you're thinking maybe it's my baby drash, which I showed you. And that's true, that's a, that's a happy place. Uh, maybe it's the place I exercise, that's also a happy place. But this, I'm going to show you, this makes me very, very happy. And I only usually use it on Shabbat. So we're going to have to go for a walk a little. You can see all the way in the background there again, Yericho and, all the, and the Jordan Valley, the Amek Ayardain. And now we're going to go into my corner over here. This is where we, I showed you once... The punching bag. Remember I showed you guys my punching bag? Well, every once in a while, especially on Shabbat, I set this up. Do you guys, have you, do you know what this is? This, it swings back and forth. This is called a hammock. And you lie down on this hammock and it's so relaxing. It has pillows over here and you lie down and I could put it up and I could take it down. And usually I put it up today just to show you. But usually I only put it up on Shabbat. And because on Shabbat, it's a time where we can relax. And I'll take out a good safer or a good book and I'll put it down here. And I'll be honest, usually after a couple of minutes, I fall right asleep. I'm a big snorer. So I sit out here and I usually fall asleep. But this is my one of my favorite spots in my house. It's actually underneath something, right? You can see here we go. We're like in the corner here. And, uh, and, but it's really one of my favorite spots in my whole house. It's a place where I can come and relax and read a good book because reading books is very important. And you can see, you come out here and here you are. And you have everything in front of you. You could say hello to the Moses boys who are at their house over there watching. And that's what I love to do. I love to relax on a hammock. And I'm so happy that here in Mitzvah Richel in my house, I have my own hammock. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you, a special spot, a little secret spot. If you came to my house on Shabbat and I was lying in my hammock, you'd never be able to find me. It's a secret spot under, under a, like a secret area in my house, like this little secret hideout spot where I can relax and people can't find me. I don't really put it there so people can't find me. I like it when people find me. But it's a place where I can relax on Shabbat, read a good book, learn a good safer, and take a great nap. Okay, so let's talk about somebody, a very special person. His name was Rav Chama Bar Ada Shliach Tzion. Now, the, remember we said Bar, the name Bar means the son of. So Rav Chama, Rav because he was a rabbi, Chama was his first name, and he was the son of someone named Ada Shliach Tzion. Okay? And he was an incredibly, incredibly special person. He's a big Tamachacham. He learned a lot of Torah. And he lived here in beautiful Eretz Yisrael. Not really in Mitzvah Richo, but in other parts of Eretz Yisrael that are beautiful. This is where he lived in this wonderful, wonderful land. Now, when he got married, he decided, him and his wife together, they decided that Rav, Rav Chama Bar Ada Shiach Tzion should be a, he should teach Torah. He should be a big Talmud Chacham, a big Tzaddik. So he should go away. He should leave their family go away to a yeshiva and study there for a long, long, long time until he could become a Tamil Chacham. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to 
go and become a Talmud Chacham and then come home, be a big rabbi, teach a lot of Torah to a lot of people, and even though he'd be away from his home for a long, long time, he thought that would be the best thing. So he packed the bag. Now, sometimes, like I have to sometimes go on a trip away from my family, I'll go for a week, maybe two weeks, right? Sometimes people have to go away for a month, a lot of sometimes, maybe some of our abas or imas or mommies or daddies, sometimes they have to go for a trip for work and we miss them a lot, right? We really, really miss them. Well, you should know something. When your abba or ima or mommy and daddy or whatever you call your parents, when they go away on a trip and you miss them, they miss you much, much more. If you miss them this much, they miss you this much, even even more than the screen, they miss you like all oh, that much, because our mommies and daddies miss us so much when they go away, and that's really how it is. So they go away. So sometimes we'll go away for a week, two weeks, however long it is. They'll go away for a certain amount of time, and that's how that's how long we go away for. I've got two little boys here that are cutting through our our yard here, where we allow everybody to walk through and they don't really know what we're doing here. But let's get back to our story. So Chama Barada Sheikh Sion, okay, decided he's going to go away to become a big Tamil Chacham. And he decided to go away. You ready for this? Not for one week, not for two weeks, not three, not four, not five, for 12 years. 12 years, he decided to go learn Torah away from his family for 12 years. Now, his wife said it was okay, and he had little, little kids there, so he didn't know. So he went away for 12 years, and 12 years, he didn't come back for, like, Pesach or come back for Shabbat sometimes. For 12 years, he never came home, not one time, not one time. Maybe once in a while he wrote a letter home. They didn't have email then. They didn't have phones they did, you couldn't FaceTime. So when he went away for 12 years, that means they didn't see him for 12 whole years. How crazy is that? 12 years. Can you imagine 12 years not being home? Well, he didn't go home for 12 years. After 12 years, he had studied a tremendous amount of Torah. So much Torah he studied. You can't even imagine how much Torah he studied. He studied all this Torah after 12 years, and he said, you know, now it's time for me to go home. But he didn't want to go home right away and just walk into his house, because if he did that, he might scare people. He wants them to know that he's coming so that they can expect him. His wife's probably going to want to make a nice meal for him, right? There's going to be all these type of things that, that people have to prepare when he gets home, so he doesn't want to surprise them. Right? Sometimes we think surprises are good. Sometimes we think so, sometimes surprises aren't good because sometimes people like to prepare for, for something and a surprise isn't something that they like. So you have to really know when it's a good idea to surprise someone and it's not. And Rav Chama Bar Abba, Bar Abba, excuse me, Shliach Tzibor knew that it wouldn't be a good idea just to, what we call in Hebrew, pitom, means just to somehow just come home, right? He knew that he had to tell them beforehand. So he decided to go home and to go to the Beit Midrash in his town and then start talking to people and then people will see him and they'll start saying, hey, guess who's home? Rav Chama came home and then somebody will go to his house and knock on his door and say to his wife, say, hey, did you know that your husband is home? And then she'll know, oh, my husband's home, I'm going to get ready, and then everybody will be ready. So that was Rav Chama Bar Abba, Bar Abba Shliach, Sion's idea. So he goes, and he starts the long walk home. He's walking home, and he knows all this Torah now, so he has all these things to think about. And he has, oh, this long walk wasn't even boring for him. Sometimes we go on a long walk, and we we annoy our parents. We're like, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? Are we there yet? How much longer? He didn't do that. He had all these things, all these different Torah to think about. He thought about Pesach and Matzah, and he thought about Sukkot and Luav and Etrog, and he thought about Rosh Hashanah and the Shofar. He had all these different mitzvot to think about, all this great Torah learning to think about. So he did not get bored at all. So he finally gets to his town. 
He walks into his town and he sees some people he hasn't seen them in 12 years. 12 years he hasn't seen them. And he says hello to them. They say hello to you. They give you they give a big hug because it wasn't the time of Corona. So you gave a big hug when you saw people. And that's what he did. And it was great. And he was so happy. And he asked people, where's the baby drash? And he said, oh, you're going to love to see the baby drash. We made it bigger and we have better svarim in there and nicer tables. So he goes into the baby drash and he loves the baby drash. It's so nice. And he walks into the Midrash, he sits down in his old seat, is open, no one's sitting there, he sits in his old seat, and he takes out, then they didn't have books like they have today, then they had like scrolls, and he takes out a scroll and he starts studying Torah, and he's so happy, and he knows that while he's sitting there, like learning Torah, other people are going around the town saying, hey, you know who I just saw? I just saw Rochama Bar Ada Shliach Tzion. And people are like, really, wow. And then sooner or later, Someone would go to his house, knock on his door, and say to his wife, hey, by the way, your husband just came home. That was the grand plan. So he's sitting there learning, and he doesn't know how long he should sit there for. How long is it going to take for the rumor, for the for people to tell his wife that he's back, and then how long will it take her to prepare? So he's not exactly sure how long he should sit there for. Okay? So... Sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and he's learning. And then he notices that there's a young man sitting on the other side of the baby drash, and he's also studying Torah. And we have a rule in the Torah that it's always better to study Torah with somebody else. You can trade ideas with the other person. Always better to have what we call a chavruta. Always great to have somebody else to study Torah with, okay? That's the, uh, that's the idea. Better to always have someone to study Torah with. So that's what he that's what he said. He's going to sit there and he says, you know what? I'll study Torah with this young man. So he sits down with the young man and he says, hi, my name is Chama. Maybe he didn't even say his name. I don't know. And he says, why don't we study Torah together? You're studying on this side of the room. I'm studying on that side of the room. You're a young man. I'm a little older, but we can study together. So it's great, they start studying Torah, and they get into this great discussion. Maybe it was before Pesach, and it was about how to make matzah. Should matzah be in the oven for a long time? Should matzah be in the oven for a short time? How do you build the matzah? How do you make the matzah? I don't know. How do you tell the story of Pesach? Do you talk about Paro? Do you not talk about Paro? What should you do? Who should you talk to? Who should you not? Well, all this again, and talking Torah back and forth. At a certain point, Rav Chama says, he starts to feel a little bad inside. Why does he feel a little bad? Because he realizes that these, this boy is almost the same age, probably, as one of his sons. When Rav Chama Bar Ada Shliach Tzion left his house, he had a four-year-old son. And it's 12 years later, so his four-year-old son, who he hasn't seen in 12 years, is probably around 16. And this boy is probably around 16. And he realizes this boy knows so much Torah, his Abba, his dad, his, his, his father, probably taught him a lot of Torah. And he said, Oi, if only I had stayed home, my son, whose name was Oshia, maybe he would know as much Torah as this boy. And he started to think, maybe the 12 years I went away... Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Maybe that was a bad idea that I went away for so long. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. And he started to really regret. He started to feel bad that he had gone away. So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> he's, studying, <coughs> he's studying Torah, and he realizes that he's been, he's been studying for a long time. His wife probably knows that he's home, and she probably started preparing, and he realizes it's time for me to go back home. So, he walks home, he knocks on the door, his wife already knew that he was coming, she made him his favorite meal, she remembered from 12 years ago, she put on a special dress for him, and she opens the door, and they're so excited to see each other, give each other a big hug and a big kiss, and they're talking to each other, and it's so great to see you, 12 years, think, and he thanks his wife, because if it wasn't for her, he wouldn't be allowed to go, and he's t talking, but in, deep down in his heart, he's so happy to see his wife, and so happy to see his little kids, but in his heart he feels bad because this Talmud Chacham that he saw in the Beit Midrash, the 16-year-old, even though he was only 16, he was a big Talmud Chacham, maybe he should have helped his son learn Torah at that time. He wasn't sure. So as happy as he is, he's still a little sad. And then 
there's a knock on the door, and even before they go up to get the door, the door swings open, and who walks in? But that Talmud Chacham from the Beit Midrash, that 16-year-old Talmud Chacham. And there we have a halacha, we have a law, that when a Talmud Chacham walks in the room, what do we do? Just like a Sefer Torah walks in the room, what do we do? We stand up, right? We stand up for a Talmud Chacham when they walk in the room, right? If our, if our Rav or the principal walks in the room, so we stand up for them out of kavod, out of respect. So Rav Chama stands up when this, when this kid comes in. And the family looks and they start laughing. And he says, why are you laughing? And they said, what kind of a father stands up for his son? And he said, what do you mean, my son? And they said, that's Oshia. That, remember when you left, Oshia was only four years old. Well, now he's 16. And he's a big Talmud Chacham. And Rav Chama Bar Ada Shliach Tzion felt so good. Because all this time he was so sad. Maybe his son Oshia doesn't really know Torah. Maybe his son Oshia doesn't care about the Torah. And that would make him feel so sad that this boy that he learned with loves the Torah and he didn't give that to his own son. But now he sees that this boy that he was so impressed with, that learned so much Torah, was really his son the entire time. And he gives Oshia a big hug and Oshia gives his father a big hug and they're so happy to see each other and they're so proud because now they know that they're together again, they can study Torah together, and they can learn together. And now Rav Chama Ba'ad Sheikh Tzion is going to be home all the time. And that's good. Now, a lot of times we're home all the time with our parents now also, right? Because of this corona illness, right? We're, we're home all the time as well. And that is, right, that's very good because it gives us time to be with our Abba and our Ima, our mommy and our daddy, maybe that we didn't always have that time. And we should use that time. We should go to our mommy's Abbas and we should go to them and say, can we learn Torah together? Because now is a chance that we're all home together the whole day. So we get this great chance to learn Torah together. And that's what Urchama Ba'ada Shaliach Tzion started to do. Okay, wasn't that a great story? I love that story. When I read that story in the Gemara, I was so happy to read that story. It made me feel so good deep down inside. All right, now I want to show you something special. This is, because I like to do show and tell, and I like to show you something special that I have that means a lot to me. And I'm going to show you today a sitter. I showed you a sitter once um, about a week and a half ago, but this is a different sitter. This is the sitter that I daven with. Okay, and you can see this sitter is pretty old. I've been davening with this sitter for 25 years. I daven with this sitter. I keep it in my talus bag, in my tefillin bag, and I daven with this sitter. It's red. It's a red sitter, and it's so old that it starts to fall apart. So we have, I put tape on it. If you see, my friend Ariel, about 10 years ago, maybe even longer, 12 years ago, put tape on it, and even on the corners so that the, it doesn't fade. And if you look inside, you can see the pages over here are somewhat yellow. And I want to show you what I do. I write notes in my sitter. If you can see, I'll put it up really close. I write notes in my sitter so that way I can remember what the words mean. Not just the translation into, let's say, English or Spanish or French or whatever language, but also like their deeper meaning. Like, so when I think about, when I say Shema, this is the page of Shema, right? You see how it says... Shema over here, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elkeinu, Hashem Echad. So it says Shema. I don't just think that Shema means to listen, but Shema means to understand. So when I say Shema, I look at my notes and I say Shema, and I think to myself, I understand. So that's why, and I have notes in my sitter, and I think it's really great. And I love having my sitter. Now, the truth is, I can dive in with any sitter. I don't need this sitter to daven, right? And if I'm somewhere and I don't have my sitter with me, I don't say, well, now I can't daven because I don't have my sitter, right? So I have to, I have to, I don't have to have my sitter, but I like having my sitter because when I have my sitter, I feel comfortable having my sitter. I feel that I'm used to davening with my sitter, so it makes me feel better, and I like having my sitter. But most importantly with my sitter, if I want this sitter to last my whole life, like everything else that I have, I have to take care of it, right? So that's why I put the tape on and I don't leave it outside ever, 
right? I leave it, I keep it inside, I keep it in something to protect it. So that way that even if it's old and even if it's hard to use, I can still use it, okay? So that's my story that I wanna show you. And then today, before we end off, I have a special guest. He's on the show a lot more than any of my other children. This is Moshe, and I wanna show you something. Moshe, today, we have a big problem because Pesach's coming up, right? And on Pesach, we can't get a haircut. On Cholomoed, we can't get a haircut. And then after Pesach, it starts something called Sfirat Omer, which is a sad time, and we can't get a haircut then. So usually Moshe and I get our haircuts together by a good friend of ours who lives here in Mitzvah Richo. But with Corona, we're not allowed to go there. We can't get a haircut from him because we can't go to his house because it's not safe, right? So today, my wife, Moshe's mommy, gave us haircuts. And they look a little different than what we're used to. We used to have, we're used to having a lot of hair, but we said to, to Moshe's mommy and to my wife, Eliza, who we love so dearly, maybe one day we'll bring her on the show. We said, you know what? We're not gonna leave the house for a long time, right? We're not allowed to leave the house. So what should we do? We should just shave off all of our hair, right? And a lot of people, right, like, like Rachel said, a lot of people have this problem. So, oh no, I'm also a little embarrassed. But here, put your hat on because we don't go anywhere without a keep on, right? So we decided today we were going to shave our heads. And we both have shaved heads. But it's okay. Even if we think it looks a little funny, a lot of people like this look. But like if we're not used to it, but it's okay because our hair will grow back. And that'll be okay. So you might get a strange haircut right before Pesach, one that you're not used to, but that's okay. And Moshe is okay with it also. See, look at that smile. Look at that smile. See, he's very okay with it. Guys, that's the end of the show today. And I'm so, I'm so happy that you, I'm so happy that you came on to the show. And I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Okay, bye-bye.